Well, good morning, everybody. Happy Saturday. Welcome back to The Daily Word. Pastor Kyle here. We're going to continue our study in 1 Corinthians. And this morning we find ourselves in chapter 8. It's a little bit of a shorter chapter than chapter 7 was, but nonetheless equally important. Uh, for a little bit more background context, just as a reminder, this is a letter that Paul wrote to the church in Corinth as a response to a letter they sent to him asking him several questions and in which they outlined some issues going on in the church. So uh, we find ourselves in this chapter, and the chapter is in my Bible and the ESV is entitled, and those titles are not inspired, they're just added by the editors, uh, Food Offered to Idols. So you might be tempted to read this and think, what is this about? Or, well, that's not for me. We don't sacrifice food to idols, so this isn't a big deal. But this is eminently practical for us. So let's read it together. It says, Now concerning food offered to idols, we know that all of us possess knowledge. This knowledge puffs up, but love builds up. Let's keep that principle in mind, okay? Um, if anyone imagines that he has, that he knows something, he does not know yet as he ought to know. But if anyone loves God, he is known by God. Paul's making a comparison here that your knowledge of God does not equal your love for God, nor does your knowledge of God increase God's love for you. Uh, just making a principled statement here. Um, but again, this is in the context of, of meat sacrifice, food sacrifice to idols. So let's figure out what Paul's trying to say. Therefore, as to the eating of food offered to idols, we know that an idol has no real existence and that there is no one but God. For although there may be so-called gods in heaven or on earth, and indeed many are gods and many are lords, yet for us there is one God, the Father, from whom all things in whom we exist, and one Lord, Jesus Christ, to whom all things uh, are all things and through whom we exist." So he's clarifying again, uh, we need to, uh, you know, get in our heads straight the knowledge that idols are really nothing. It's just a wooden statue. It, there's no person behind it. Now he's saying, you know, there could be a demon behind it, but uh, that, that's not God, right? Many in heaven, you might be called lords or gods, or we might be calling them that, but that's not what they are. So the idol in, in effect is nothing. It has no power. It has no uh, intrinsic value. So meat sacrifice to it, food sacrifice to it. It's not tainted in any way other than what we're about to get into. Verse 7, he says, However, not all possess this knowledge, but some, uh, through former association with idols, eat food as really uh, offered to an idol, and their conscience being weak is defiled. So this is this idea that people in the church were telling each other, dude, it's just an idol, eat whatever you want. And that person who used to go and worship at that temple, their conscience is affected by that. They're like, man, I just... I mean, I used to worship that and there was, you know, immorality involved and sin involved and, and I just don't know, but they're eating because everyone's telling them to and, and they're, they're heartbroken because of it. And verse uh, 80 says, food will not uh, commend us to God. We are no worse off if we do not eat and no better if we do, but take care that this right of yours does not somehow become a stumbling block to the weak. And weak just meaning, uh, you know, newer in the faith, less studied in theology and understanding conscience is being affected by things that associate them with their former life for if anyone sees you who have knowledge eating in an idol's temple will he not be encouraged if his conscience is weak to eat the food offered to idols and so by your knowledge this weak person is destroyed that's a big word destroyed the brother for whom christ died Thus, sinning against your brothers and wounding their conscience when it is weak, you sin against Christ. Therefore, if food makes my brother stumble, I will never eat meat, lest I make my brother stumble. Again, the principle here is very clear. Let us not do things that cause a weaker brother to stumble. Now, put it in the context of today's uh, life. Okay, life in America, we don't have meat sacrificed to idols, but we do have things that there is Christian freedom in, you know, eating certain foods, drinking certain beverages, smoking cigars, whatever it may be. Uh, this might be something that you and your conscience, you have a freedom to do. But for the sake of your brother 
who might look at something like that as an association with their former life, for the sake of your sister in Christ, your wife, your children, whatever it may be, if that is something that somebody who is weaker in their, their understanding of, of God and of, of forgiveness of sin and of the gospel in general, if they see you doing that and they stumble, their conscience is destroyed because of that, or they, they go and partake with you and their conscience is destroyed because of that. Other areas of scripture say it would be better if a millstone were to be hung around your neck. This would be a two-ton boulder hung around your neck and you'd be thrown into the sea. That'd be better for you. Basically, it'd be better for you to die and just be in heaven than to cause younger people in the, in, in, in the faith to stumble. So in this sense, yes, do you have freedom to eat meat sacrificed to idols? This is the idea of you, uh, cultural expressions of freedom. Yes, you do. But you also have a binding responsibility to those who are in the church with you to care for them, to shepherd them, to make sure that their conscience is not defiled, is not put in danger. Because the Bible tells us that we're not to go against our conscience. So just make sure that when you're uh, engaging in those activities that you've done so thoughtfully, prayerfully, carefully, that you're doing so uh, not putting anyone else in danger. Uh, you know, Paul expresses, yeah, you have freedom to eat those things because we know an idol is nothing. Uh, but if it causes another brother to stumble and that's where we we want to live. If food makes my brother stumble for his sake, guess what? I'm never going to eat that food again just for his sake. Why? Because I love my brother in Christ, my sister in Christ so much that I'm going to sacrifice my own liberties, my own freedoms uh, to help them grow and to love Jesus more because ultimately all of this is passing away. None of it really matters other than for the glory of God and for us storing up treasures in heaven and for the coming alongside of each other in the church to grow one another in godliness and holiness and in right living. So take that for Saturday, um, marinate on those thoughts, use your life to glorify God, use your life to build up other people in love and in Christ likeness and keep your freedoms with an open hand. Don't uh, flaunt them brashly in front of people because as Paul said, you might cause the destruction of your brother, which would be tragic uh, in their conscience, in their them sinning against their own conscience. Uh, and we don't wanna do that. We wanna build each other up in love. So. Uh, take that with you today. Enjoy that. Uh, happy Saturday. Maybe we'll see you at church tonight or at church tomorrow, or we'll see you online joining us for the live stream. Other than that, take care. Have a great Saturday.